Hello and welcome to the 55th video in this series of videos programming a chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to start laying out, it'll only be a short video, but the function definitions of the functions we'll need to implement a very rudimentary search. The first thing I've done is, or you need to do is add a file called evaluate.c to the project folder and make sure you put evaluate.c also inside your make file, otherwise it won't be included in the compilation. And we're going to find a function called eval position, and this does exactly what it says on the tin. We're going to take in our position and we're going to return an integer which says the evaluation score of the position in hundreds of a pawn from the side to moves point of view. For now, because it's a placeholder, we'll just return zero. And I'm going to take this and copy it and go into defs.h and at the bottom here just put in the definition of the function so it can be used elsewhere. So that's the first step of the functions that we'll need to fill in. The next is in search.c. I've made is repetition static and in the search position function I've added in a pointer to a search info. And don't forget to add this pointer also on the definition in defs.h. At the top of search.c, I'm going to add a static void, and this will be another placeholder definition called checkup. And this simply will be called every 4,000 nodes or so. And this is simply going to, and I'll just put a comment now, check if time up or interrupt from. GUI. This does exactly what it says on the tin. So our search position in here will han handle the iterative deepening, which I talked briefly about in the alpha beta video, I think. That'll all be done in here, and also the search in it initialization also will be called inside here. So another function we need to add is we need to add a static void and clear oop, for search. My goodness, can't type. And in here we'll take a pointer to our search info. And what will happen inside, and actually we'll take a pointer to our board as well. And what will happen inside here is we'll simply clear the various stats and history heuristic arrays and principal variations, things like that. We'll clear it all to zero ready for a new search. And now to the most interesting part is the definitions for alpha beta. So we define the function as alpha beta. Oops, it has a return type of int, it returns an integer, which is the score. And we'll take in an argument of alpha. We take in the value of beta. We take in the remaining depth, which gets decremented just as in perved each time it's called. This is a recursive function, you remember from the videos. We'll take in a pointer to our info and a pointer to our board. And what we'll also actually take is we'll take in an int called do null, which is the permission of whether we can make a null move or not, but that will be explained and indeed comes a lot later. And we'll put as a placeholder here return zero. Now, when you were watching the, if you, if you indeed watch the alpha beta description video in the minmax, there's a fundamental problem with the game tree, and that is, let's say at the bottom of the tree, the last move was made by white, and white captured a black knight with his queen. As far as white's concerned, the evaluation of the position is, he is 300 or so points up in terms of hundreds of a pawn, because he's a knight up. But what if, if black could have replied in this tree, black could have taken the queen? then actually white has gained a knight but lost a queen, which is worth at least three knights. So white's actually lost, but he's evaluated this position as good for him. This is what's known as the horizon effect. And the way you deal with the horizon effect is actually to, in simple terms, because there's another trick in the function, but it's to do something called quiescent search, and you can find detail about this on the chess programming wiki. It's very well explained. But basically in quiescent search, you carry on with alpha beta in the, the negamax fashion, but you don't have a depth and you only generate 
capture moves. So you basically search all captures until they've been resolved and then and only then do you return the evaluation of the position. There's another condition where you can also return the evaluation of the position without searching the captures but I'll go into that when we actually write the function. And that's why it's called quiescence. It's an attempt to find a quiet position from which we can get an evaluation to eliminate the horizon effect. And it would break my heart really to let this engine play its first game recorded on a video without a quiescent search because it looks horrible when uh, just alpha beta is used because the engines suffer very badly from the horizon effect and throw pieces away um, with careless abandon. It's not very nice to watch. Well, not for me anyway. So we'll put in the definition of our quiescence here like this. So just alpha and beta, the position and the info. There's no null move. There are no depth or anything like this. And again, as a placeholder, we shall return zero from this function. OK, so that's it then for this video. That's the skeleton setup of most of, I think, all or maybe most of the functions that we'll need for actually searching a position. Next video, we'll start implementing the details one by one. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.